On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to talk about sway bars. Then we're going to install our Hotchkiss sway bars on our Firebird and our Adco sway bars on our Project 4Runner. A sway bar basically connects the chassis to the suspension components to prevent body roll. Now most modern vehicles come with front and rear sway bars, so if you're going to try to increase the performance and the handling of your vehicle, you really need to look into replacing both. So as we said, most modern vehicles come from the factory with sway bars. However, they're usually thin and they're not designed for spirited or performance driving. What a sway bar does is it ties the right and left side together through the frame to prevent the body roll and how this works is if you're turning hard right the car is trying to dive to one side the sway bar actually pulls the opposite side of the uh, car down to try to keep that vehicle flat while going through the corners. Okay as you can see we've got our front sway bar removed this is our replacement sway bar from Hotchkiss and you can see it's significantly larger about two and a half times the size of the factory bar. Also pay attention to the pinches where these things are bent, these pinch together and they get really thin. This is a weak spot on the bar. Of course, they still use rubber bushings as compared to our Hotchkiss, which uses the polyurethane bushings that are actually greasable and the polyurethane link bars. Okay, here you see the difference on the rear sway bars for our Firebird. Of course, the Hotchkiss much larger than the factory one. Of course, here we go with our polyurethane bushings that are greasable and then our link bar also has polyurethane bushings. We're gonna replace this with this. Okay, as you can see, just like on the uh, instance with the Firebird, the ADCO sway bar is significantly larger than the factory sway bar from Toyota. Of course, also they use polyurethane mounts and polyurethane link kits. So uh, this is a, a much beefier setup than the factory setup. Also, we have these brackets right here that we're going to have to bolt on. As you can see, the old end links actually bolt into the frame. This right here is going to take the place of that so we can use the standard size, standard style end link. Here we have our rear sway bar for our 4Runner. Now on this particular instance, of course, it does come with the urethane bushings, but we're going to re reuse our factory link bar. And what they have done is they've sent new bushings, uh, urethane bushings to go on our link bar. So you can imagine the difference in your vehicle if you replace your factory sway bars with these beasts from Hotchkiss for your American muscle car or late model import, or with these ADCO sway bars for your off-road vehicle. It's really going to help if you do spirited driving. So when shopping for sway bars at Andy'sAutosport.com, make sure you look at the thickness. When it comes to preventing body roll, the thicker the sway bar, the better you're going to be. Popular brands we carry at Andy'sAutosport.com are Hotchkiss, Adco, Eibach, and Whiteline. If you buy any of those four brands, you can be sure you're getting the good stuff. Now today, we're going to install our Hotchkiss front and rear sway bars on our Project Trans Am. Then after that, we're going to take our Adco and install them on our 4Runner. So we're going to start with this link bar right here. This is what we're going to replace. We're going to, we're going to take this off first and that's going to release our sway bar from our control arm. We're going to use ordinary hand tools that you can buy at andysautosport.com. Of course, I'm going to use my 13 millimeter gear wrench and then just a 13 millimeter uh, socket and ratchet. Okay, now we're going to remove our mount bolts for the sway bar and our bushing. We're going to use an impact wrench for this with a 13 millimeter socket. Now we're going to install our front Hotchkiss sway bar on our Trans Am. So now basically all we're going to do is we've got our bushings installed onto our sway bar. We're going to bolt this to our sway bar mount. When I install a sway bar, I leave everything loose. It makes life a lot easier when you're putting on the link bars and the bushings. So we like to do that to make life a little easier. Now if you notice on the top of this, this right here has a little recessed area. That part goes actually into the sway bar and that keeps everything lined up straight. So we've put our link bar bolt in, put our bushings 
Then we have this little spacer. The spacer goes up on here next. Then of course we have another bushing. This bushing right here, same thing, has a little recessed area. We put our washer on first. Okay, see how that bushing goes on there like that? That's going to go on the top. Then we have another bushing and our washer. That'll go from the bottom. Okay, we're going to start by taking our link bar loose. Okay, now once we have our link bar loose, we're going to go ahead and take our U-brackets off. Going to remove these pieces too because we have new ones to replace these that fit our new brackets. Okay, when we Reinstall the rear sway bar. The new brackets, you'll notice there is an indention in the bottom of, these, of this base. There's actually a tab that's welded onto the rear differential that this sits in so that it is located correctly and it doesn't rotate and doesn't spin. You can see that tab right here. Okay, so now we're going to put our link bar in place. Once we have all the bolts started, as always, then we start tightening things up. I like to tighten the link arms up first. Now, of course, make sure that our link bar, our bracket is lined up with our tab. So now we're on to our forerunner where we're going to install our ADCO front and rear sway bars. Right here is a classic example of why the gear wrench is such a great uh, tool. As you can see, this has an Allen head in the middle of it. That's because this will actually rotate in the bushing itself. So we'll hold on to the center with our Allen wrench. and be able to ratchet that nut off. Okay, now we're going to take our bracket off that holds our sway bar and mount it actually to the chassis. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is install our end link adapter. This just goes in the hole where the factory one was. We have our bolt and our washer. Put the lock washer on the back. You want to put it in this way so that you have room for the, for the, hole, for the hole on the other side for the end link. Okay, we've got our ADCO front sway bar installed on our forerunner. So we've got everything on here. Now we're just going to tighten everything down. Okay, on the rear, it's real simple, same as the front, we're just going to install uh, the sway bar. Now, the sway bar goes over the rear end on the rear, but we're going to have to remove our link bar and then our mounts, and then we'll get this sway bar out of the way and install our new one. So, now we've installed our bushing on our sway bar, and what we're going to do is we're going to put our bracket on there. We're going to reuse our factory mount, our factory bolts, because these are pre-threaded. And we just tighten them down. Now we're putting our factory link bar back in place. Remember, this might rotate on you. If it does, you have this Allen socket, or Allen head right in the middle. So there you have the information about sway bars, why they're important, and how easy it is to install them. It takes about an hour with ordinary hand tools that you can buy at andysautosport.com. Check out the link below to see what we have available for your vehicle. 
We hope you've learned something today, and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV.